Thank you, baby. I got you. All right, here we go. You ready? Yes. All right. Hey, welcome to the Black Out Tips Podcast. Your host, Rod and Karen. And we're live on a Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. Only like four more sleeps. And we'll be in Game of Thrones land. Mm-hmm. Somebody on Twitter tried to tell me because you know they like Team Arya versus Sansa, or uh-huh. whatever. And you know I'm Team I'm Team both of them, right? But somebody tried to tell me that she's not a psychopath. You know how long it takes to come up with a recipe to cook human beings in bread and feed it to a motherfucker? Come on, what 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 what's the wet dry mixture? I mean, this cannot be easy. I don't think Hot Pot taught her how to make all that. Okay? No, he did not. Rod Morrow and his wife, Karen, host the Black Guy Who Tips podcast. Like 17 million other people, they tuned in to the premiere of Game of Thrones, which, like Vice News Tonight, is on HBO. Thrones' final season is often called the last great communal TV moment, but it's actually the sum of a lot of communities. Rod and Karen rally theirs around the hashtag Dem Thrones, originally created by the podcast Firestarter.com. We would use the hashtag on Twitter, and you see this community within the Game of Thrones community that is just like black people and black people talking black shit. I have no idea why. Like black people, I think we just are funny. We're uh, and we love like community, right? We love that vibe. So something becomes a thing within the community, and then it's just like celebrated, right? You have a shared experience of blackness coming together and enjoying these these characters, which is so ironic in this mostly white fictional world. It's fair to ask why people of all colors can't rally around a single hashtag, but Rod has an answer for that. For example, there's an episode where the Khaleesi is lifted by all these black and brown people who are calling her Mahissa, which almost sounds like master, and they're like thanking her for saving them. Now, in the context of the show, that's beautiful, right? Like, she stopped slavery in a city, but also, as black people, we feel two ways about it because it's like oh this is Hillary Clinton or whatever so you get all that stuff and it's good that we can have that conversation without interruption from people coming in to be like no well actually she's a good white person you guys need to stop we're just joking no one's quitting the show we're gonna be back next week but it was good to be able to have that conversation amongst us moments that resonate with black people, I think are a little bit different than just the major moments of the series, right? So, Melisandre is a witch, and she uses a ghost birth from her vagina to kill another character on the show. And so, I'm up there like, that's a pussy poltergeist. And then, you know, people are like retweeting, interacting. So that might take off with just like them Thrones people, but it won't take off with like Game of Thrones people. Do you follow Dem Thrones or Thrones, y'all? I absolutely do, and his recaps are the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> but it's also these really nuanced readings of what's happening, and he's making all these kinds of correlations between like regular real life shit, basically. Can I say shit? Yeah, yeah okay. it's HBO. One measure of Dem Thrones' power is that it's led to that most elusive modern behavior, real live human interaction. Yazara St. James and Nyama Sandy's premiere party mixed old friends with people they met through various Thrones groups. I'm technically in three Game of Thrones groups on Facebook. Mm -hmm. One that I actually moderate. Is it basically like the online version of being at a party like this? I think so. Why do you think black people gravitate to community spaces like this one? or to certain hashtags online. You know, when you have a hashtag, it gives you an opportunity to find your space, to find your tribe to discuss things that matter to you. Who do you want to see take the throne at the end? Arya. If anybody I want to see take it, it'd be her. You know, like you were asking about, you know, why do black people watch Game of Thrones when we're not in it? And I mean, why do white people love Black Panther? I've seen more little white girls during Halloween dressing up as a Koye than I've ever seen in my life. Okay, it's the moment we've been waiting for for two years, guys. Yes! <laughs> Don't wait. That's accurate. <laughs> At this moment, escape is everything, right? The last five years in particular, we've become much more aware of extrajudicial killings and all these kinds of things. We really need escape. Thinking specifically about the storylines and the characters, there aren't really very many black characters on the show, but 
It's not really about that. I mean, like something like this that has been anticipated for so long, it's impossible not to have these kinds of like immediate reactions. Black people responses. talk to the screen, that's what we that's do. That's what we'd be doing. Thank you for inviting us into your home, Lady Stark. The North is as beautiful as your brother claimed, as are you. What are you hoping will be in Rod's podcast? The first shade, the first official shade between Sansa and Daenerys. She surely gave her the up down. So it was one the of those black moments. girl up down. She surely did it. It was one of those moments where you realize that black feminine culture is clearly dictating everything. Cause she didn't, I'm sorry, that's some new <laughs> shit. I'm also not afraid to see her get eaten by a dragon if she can't come correct. So, gobble, gobble, slurp, slurp. <laughs> Bitch, get your life or get gone. I think Sansa makes it out. And me too. She been through too much, man. She went I through sh all this shit to die now. No. When I was younger, I was reading these type of like science fiction novels, a fantasy. My grandma would buy me this stuff at like the thrift store on the 25 cent rack. And I know at the time I felt like I was one of the only kids from where I was from that was like really heavily into that. So to see everybody like, be able to celebrate. It's beautiful. And no, I didn't think that would happen when I was just like 10 years old 